<laughs> I just realized what I'm using as a mic stand. I have a small desk lamp with a frilled top made of metal, and I just have it horizontally sitting on it. And it's actually perfect height. <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Full Restore Podcast. We're back after a long hiatus because I went absolutely crazy this summer. And we have a returning guest, Nick from What Up Minecraft, or as I called in the third episode, Wumk. Uh, what up, guys? Nick from What Up Minecraft. I mean, What Up MC here. <laughs> oh, Minecraft. Okay, I'm going to start right off with a red card. I can't access my Minecraft account. Well, because of the Mojang situation. You have to have a Mojang account to play Minecraft now. And you have to have a code that you got when you purchased Minecraft. You have to get a specific economical code that went to your email. That email that I bought Minecraft with doesn't exist anymore. And well, trying to go through the hoops to get your actual, like, economic record to get the confirm that you purchased the game to get your code... Oh my gosh, it was not worth it. I'll just never play Minecraft again. It's just not worth it. I have Minecraft on three different consoles now. I'm good. I, exactly. You just play on someone else's system. Uh, plus, Minecraft is basically just Gary's mod now on the servers, which is super servers and everything. This is a Pokemon podcast, though. And we are recording on a day when a bunch of new information just came out. Also, you didn't introduce me, assholes. <laughs> this is Alice. <laughs> From the Pokethetical's video. Yeah. Welcome, yeah, that. Welcome, Alice. Welcome. It's great to have you. So, I want to start with the new Pokemon and new forms revealed today. And Isn't Nick it? has not seen them yet. Yeah. Wait. Oh, we're not talking about, like, Vulpix and Sandshrew? That's old news. There's it, more? By the time this comes out, it'll have been two weeks. We're talking oh, showing you stuff that came out today. I know about this thanks to my good friend in Plattsburgh. Uh, well, my good friend who goes to my school, uh, Sky from Skyward Wing, who has 120,000 subscribers. Uh, Ooh. He actually, moment, I thought you said Plattsburgh. Uh, Plattsburgh, no. <laughs> it's kind of ironic. No, uh, my friend Sky has a YouTube channel where he does a lot of Pokemon content. And he... Um, he actually went to my gener our Genericon panel that we did when we did Pokemon Trivia. We have kind of shoddy footage of it from here, from someone who managed to record it. But if you go to Sky's channel, you can actually see me on his channel. I'm not mentioned. He's pointing the camera at one of his friends who I'm grilling during the quiz show. But whatever, it's the closest thing to a shout out I'm going to get. <laughs> not like I go to every club with him or anything. So, I'm going to give you the first dose of awesomeness. Here is the picture I'm putting in the chat. You'll see, first and foremost, Mr. Coconut, who oh, we already knew about. But you I will see, see an Alolan picture. Meowth. Whoa, is that a Marowak, though? It's oh, a fire-type a... Marowak, yes. We already knew about this because of the lore well, behind it. we didn't know what he looked like, though. Yeah, but we knew he was there. I just, like, skipped straight over the Meowth, and just, like, I saw the Marowak right away. Oh, who cares about the Meowth? <laughs> yes, uh, the Marowak we knew about teeth because one of the Alolan gym leaders, uh, yeah. who we cannot confirm that there are no gym leaders, but there are no gym leaders. It's a, do it's a new <laughs> thing. That one of them, who is a fire dancer, had a Marowak, and this is what that Marowak looks like. It's using dark fire. Wait, it was in the actual video? On the, on, no, on the website, they had bio uh, descriptions of the Alolan okay. gym leadery dudes. And one of them said that he used a Marowak. And it's like, that's weird. Turns out we have a fire type Marowak. And we don't know their types. The Meowth is some kind of dark type, and the Marowak is some kind of fire type, but we don't know anything else. Huh. Well, I... I... Just, you know, he said it was dark and something else, but maybe that's just his own speculation as well. Dark normal could be interesting. Very weak to Oh, punches. yeah, four times. Yeah. I don't know, like, do you think the Marowak is part ghost? That'd just, just be too meta for me. Oh, my God. I don't know, because, like, you know, oh my the gosh, think about Alolan, whole Marowak. Alolan Cubone. Oh, we Whoa. don't even know what an Alolan Cubone looks like yet. What, what do you think it looks like? Like a little ghost. Alolan version <laughs> as well. 
Marowak wears the skull of its dead son in Alola. <laughs> oh my gosh. See, I think ghosts would make sense with, like, the whole story from Gen 1. You know, how there's, like, the ghost of... Yeah, I'm sad that they're, like, the doing, Marowak that they're still calling back to Gen 1 even in this generation. But at least they're doing it in a cool way, not being like, you get a Kanto starter in X and Y. Oh my gosh, that was so... Ugh. So we have new Generation 7 Pokemon here. We have fish and more fish. I like the more fish. It, it's it's many fish. Exactly. It, it, it hmm. is literally just a bunch of fish, which is pretty interesting. Is it like a water dark? No idea. But we have it's, so it's, many it's of fish. those. It's fish. It's very fishy fish. Uh, it's very fishy. So I want to ask you about Dancer. Uh, about the, I don't remember the name. Oricorio. Oricorio? Or, or, or That's his name. I, a, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right. situation going on right here with this name. Um, but yes, the ability Dancer. Do you think that this will be a very relevant competitive Pokemon because of, will, will this change the, the sword? Will this change the dance meta? Well, competitive? I don't know if I mentioned it in the video I did it before, but I think, like, whenever I watched other people talking about it, they were always like, oh, imagine copying Swords Dance or Quiver Dance or something, but, like, what about the other dances that aren't yes. boosting moves, like the actual damaging moves that are dances? Are you going to, like, bounce those back to, like, Fiery Dance or something? And, and... That's a thing? Cresselia with... Yeah. I kill with Sapuku Dance. <laughs> Lunar Dance, which just kills Cresselia. Could you do that? Predicting a taunt to get your opponent's Orikeo to kill itself. Cresselia was the MVP of my uh, VGC 2016 team. No one oh. saw her coming. So are those different type forms? I think so, yeah. We have There's a, a... a Wormadam situation here. I haven't seen the video in a while, but I think oh, it said that they were... Uh... Fire, Electric, Ghost, and Psychic, I think. And it's like uh, a different form like for fairy. each island. I'll, I'll take it. That's what? I'll take it, but it looks more like Fairy. fairy. Is it Fairy? Um, I can't remember. But I remember they said it was like a different form is found on each island. Yes. yes. West side, I forget, east is, side this, situation. is this our like national bird? Because <laughs> uh, we're, we're going to need something bigger to fly around on. Like oh, like the true. the oh. Pidgeot of the generation. Yeah, I do not believe. I think they're more like a um, uh, like a Chatot. <laughs> yeah, like a Chatot. Uh, uh, no, mm. no, no, like a Halucha. Yeah, a Pokemon with a with strange competitive uh, abilities, but very non-competitive stats. <laughs> Just like I you wouldn't see. expect that a uh, Halucha would be extremely competitively viable, but it has a ton of moves and a rad ability that make it very viable. Flying press. No, people rarely actually use flying press. It's all about, like, wide guard and quick guard and stuff. Very toolbox. I haven't, I haven't played Pokemon, like, competitively since March, <laughs> so... Well, Nick here is a, a master at VGC. Oh. I dominated I my that? tournament Can with that, Cresselia sir? Helping Hand and Kyogre Waterspout. I don't know if that's something he is aware of. I actually haven't played VGC 2016 that much. Have you just been doing free-for-alls? Oh my god, are you excited yeah. about the free-for-all mode? Yes. Yes. Very excited. Oh my gosh, so, so it was announced in a trailer, many trailers, that there's a new mode where you can have 1v1v1v1. And... Nick and myself have several times experimented with doing a multi-battle and saying you can hit anyone on screen. This results in, apparently for me, even while I do it at my club, the Pokemon League in Plattsburgh, it always ends with someone having one or maybe two fucking Gligar and nobody <laughs> kills the fucking Gligar. Earthquake, Toxic Heal. <laughs> Gligar. Oh. In my experience... In my experience on my stream, it's always Shuckle, 
if there's like somebody that brings a shuckle and then people are just like, well, I can't damage it. I'll just kill everybody else. And instead. then power trek. And then the shuckle wins. Yeah, I'll fuck over with shuckle. I, I have a video of me playing against you while you're on the stream and I'm like haphazardly recording it and it's all inverted so you can't read shit that's on the screen. <laughs> And it's one of my worst videos on the, on the Four Store channel because it's just me getting so fucking mad at your dumb Gligar situation. There were two Gligar! Did I ever face you? I forget. Oh my gosh. No, Alice. Uh, the only thing we did together competitively was I embarrassed myself on the uh, Pokedex quiz. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, what kind of Pokedex quiz? Uh, you it's to a, name as many it's Pokemon a silly list possible. site that has a thing where you can type in on a timer the uh Oh yeah, I did that. The generation. I would love to host uh duels where we uh have lots I'm of battles. Fine with dueling you, but I'll be using the same unupdated teams since March. No, I'm talking about the, uh, I'm talking about the list site. But yeah, we do need more ring ring target uh videos. Um, Nick, I put up a ton of videos from my club up in Plattsburgh, the Plattsburgh Pokemon Club, uh, Pokemon League, and we did a ton of, um, Pokemon Showdown videos from that, and some of them are absolutely hilarious with the comebacks and the stupid teams we make, because we'll switch off, we'll make, each one of us of six, we'll make a Pokemon on our team, and then whenever we switch into that Pokemon, we gain control, so it's chaos, six people playing a, playing an online game. And sometimes we win. <laughs> Sounds interesting. You should see our all grass monotype sometimes team. Sometimes you don't. We made an all grass monotype team and we fought it against an all dragon team. I will not spoil how that oh, ends. Oh man. <laughs> but let's just say Sceptile had his day. <laughs> That's the first thing I thought of. Yeah. Are you ready for derp? And you mean, are you talking about the new grass dragon? <laughs> I'm talking about this hmm. and I can't scroll quick enough I actually like the sand castle it's what a motherfucking the... sand castle uh, I feel like head. this is gonna be that Pokemon that people like criticize in the every generation like when people are like know. Gen when, 5 as sucks soon as, just look at Garbodor as soon as Sky saw what? this what? I'm mad about this fucking ice cream in love with this. I think this is a darling cause like ghost Pokemon in this generation are just oh, it's ghost ground, like. painfully adorable and this one is probably gonna be a ghost type and it's so hard no, to hate ghost, ghost types type. It's so hard to hate ghost the type ghost ground, type. ghost ground type. There's okay. only one other ghost ground type. Um, and, yeah. Which is that? Golurk. Golurk. Yep. Yeah. Golurk. Oh my gosh. Uh, Nick, we start. I started a. Uh, I finally got around to starting a let's play on this channel that I've been working on forever. Um. About. No, it, no, it, it didn't end up being the schema run or anything. It's it's. It's a monotype mm. kind of run. Um, it's a run where I'm doing black one, and I call it the random red run. It's randomized, and I can only catch Pokemon that can learn Flamethrower, which is one-sixth of all the Pokemon in that Pokedex. It is, every, it is many Pokemon that are not fire type, such as my starter, which is a Machop, but also, Every single fire type except for Rotom Heat, which cannot learn Flamethrower, is the only fire type in that generation and all the generations before it that cannot learn Flamethrower. Wait, Machop learns Ma Flamethrower? Machamp. Machamp has access to the TM Flamethrower. Uh, what? Gen 1? I did Gen not know that. Gen 1 situations, man. Gen 1. Uh, my team had a ton of fun, but seeing as... It's pretty hard to come by Pokemon that learn Flamethrower. And one of my first situations was against a trainer in an area that I had to get through who had a Gullurk. And I had a Machop. So well, that I sounds may like a have bad time. within five, min five, video five episodes of the series starting. Because <laughs> I had to get through a fucking Gullurk. It it's quite the hilarious thing, and I, I can't wait to get back to record more episodes of it. So, Sandcastle. 
Yes, do, do it just looks castle? like... What, what are your thoughts? It looks like it's surprised to be alive. <laughs> but it's a, set, it's a first stage Pokemon, it's not even basic. It's <laughs> no, first I'm looking at the big one. <laughs> yeah, it's first stage... Um, uh, sorry, it's basic form. I don't, is, I don't know uh, what the basic form is supposed to look like. It's, it's a little sand m mound. What the hell's the yellow thing inside? Well, I think, I think it's it, it looks like the portal from the sand level on the beach world of Mario <laughs> Sunshine where you fight Shadow Mario? That, it, that was a thing. I you remember the Mario crumbling Mario portal that you had to get through to, to encounter the Shadow Mario race? I never played Mario games. Oh, Nick, you have to have played Mario Sunshine, right? Nope. Oh my Wasn't gosh. Mario Sunshine for the N64? No, it's for the GameCube, guys! I didn't have a Nintendo console until the Wii. I Trash. The only games I, I remember from the GameCube that I like, like to play were Sonic and Smash and Custom Robo. Custom Robo was fucking phenomenal. Trippy as hell, I did not understand the plot for 10 years after I played it, but... Amazing. Find your father. Your father is is actually the guy who created the organization you're trying to fight. I could never get past the maze. What maze? There's the maze, a maze at the end of the game. There's the maze? There's a clown house. That's easy! I couldn't get through the maze, okay? The dragon fire th attack on the on the enemies, I could not get through it. Oh, the you dragon mean the fire attack was illegal, too overpowered. The illegal wire? Yes, the illegal... Oh. Man, it was illegal. I weapons. love illegal weapons. Fuck that, man! It was. I, uh... I mean, did you even get your uh, father's original Robo? That was awesome. I didn't get to that point. Did you even face the final? Uh, like, I ride? I just told you never. I never got past the maze. <sighs> but the final form was like so big and bulky. And I will cool. someday replay that, maybe for my channel. Okay. So, we done with the sandcastle? Can we move on to the pre-evolution of of the bear? The bear looks cute. Yeah, what it, type what, is that? Why it's is, still the same type. What's its type? I don't know, it's just the same type. Okay, look at the size of its head and then where its legs connect. Is This thing looks more like a bumblebee than a bear cub. Although, I <laughs> like, want to point like out what insect. Jay Witt said. It doesn't said. have a body. I want to point out what Jay Witt said. For all the pre-evolutions of bears, this is the first one that actually walks around on all fours like a bear should. Huh. But that, it's, it, it looks like a toy. It doesn't look like a full animal because I don't know where its intestines would be. It doesn't have a body from this angle. Wait, how like many other bears are there? Ursaring? Ursaring, oh, Teddy Ursa, and then a whole shit ton more. Like Pang, what's it called again? Pangor Pang Pangoro. Um, yeah, Pangoro. Ice Sky. Oh, yeah. Ice Bear, Ice Bear Man. Oh, I guess they do all stand on two legs. Yeah. But yeah, so that's that's the news. Um, it is the use Pokemon. Uh, well, it it's getting pretty real. It it's getting pretty close to the release date, which is coming out this fall. I'm excited. I'm so excited. I feel like that yellow thing in his mouth is just like them screwing up on the border. Yeah, I think that's just the render is just empty behind it. Oh no, it's the background. Yeah. Like because the hole cause... It and the outline is yellow, so it's the background. It's the outline. Yeah. The hell does someone build a sand sculpture with a hole in the middle of it? Because <laughs> there's like the yellow border around him, so I think that's just like seeing through him. Uh, I don't know. It's strange. <laughs> all right. So next thing I want to cover, if we can move on, is the possibly confirmed starters this is a leak oh, that, that came out many months ago why is it up talks. again because in the sketch in the red in the purloin final evolution page shows a trainer that we see in the most recent trailer a trainer who has green hair with little spiky bits in her hair in that sketch you can see that girl sitting next to purloin's final evolution this was released four months or so before we knew that that character existed, which is pointing us very maybe close. Maybe they just took maybe they just took the character design to fuck with us. Which means that this is either some kind of advanced ploy, which you know 
it does say classified in the corner of every sketch, which is a little on the nose. So maybe it's something to dissuade us, but it could either be an early version of the evolutions or it could be the real thing. And they might be the real thing. We might have another firefighting or maybe fire dark starter. Huh. That, uh... This is I don't the know real what deal. kind of... This is the real deal. What kind of move is he using in the middle there where he's just, like, thrusting forward and I, I fire's think... coming out? <laughs> yeah, it does look like it's kind of coming out of his belt. Which is another situation of why the fuck do Pokemon wear clothes? All three cool of them are actually wearing his... clothes. It would have been cool if he used his tail as, like, a fire whip thing. All three of them are wearing clothes, I just realized. Um, so we have literal Robin Hood. Yeah, that's cool. Oh, yeah, his wing is also like a bow. Yeah. <laughs> or strange, I guess. And it's going to be pretty funny with the whole gender ratio of starters being 1090 situation where almost every single pa Poplio will turn into a sassy mermaid woman with a bottle nose. Unless they change it. Unless this isn't Dun, real. Dun, dun. Or that too. So yeah, um, you know, these are probably going to be the starters. I'm not crazy excited, but they're good designs. Just not crazy about the application. Uh, but, you know, there there is still a chance that these could also be fake and just very lucky and misleading. Yep. We also have, and besides, the middle forms are always the coolest. Except Servine. Are they? <laughs> Except Servine. But Grovow, though. And yeah, Grovow's Gratia. pretty cool. Combuskin is just and, a penis. And, and, and not Quilladin. <laughs> Poor Quilladin. Oop, hit the mic. Poor Quilladin. Combuskin's a penis. Oh my gosh. Quilladin, my whole story with that. Oh. We're not talking about the penis. I think he just wants to deny that it's a penis. <laughs> uh, so we move on to... The penis. Penis, yes. There we go. Generation 3. We want to... Let's take a break from Gen 6 and talk about Pokemon Go. Nick, could you Ooh. briefly summarize surmise what you have learned about the new update? Okay, so... There's a GIF on Reddit that perfectly summarizes it. The new update? Yeah. Okay, well, now I have to see it. <laughs> okay, let me pause Dark Souls and go get it. Ah, uh, yes, playing Dark Souls while we record a podcast. Hey, I managed to kill a boss and not say a thing. Is it is it near the top? Yeah. Is it you planted grass? God damn it, I already got the <laughs> link. Whatever, he can put it He can put it in the video or whatever. I, oh my gosh. Fix, fix curveballs, change your nickname, fix battery saver minor. What about the tracker? So what about the tracker, Nick? Let tell us. <laughs> tell us about the tracker. What are the new changes? You planted grass. Um, yeah. So planted grass. I was like, uh, what was it? I was I was editing the video while I was at work. I, well, not editing it. Like I was just uh, like because I quickly uploaded it right before I went to sleep. So when I was at work before it went live, I was like editing the description stuff, and I went to go uh, look up something from like i went to go look up something about pokemon go and then as i'm browsing there i see a picture i'm like hey wait a minute that's that's not what the the new tracker looks like and then i realized that the subset of people they were talking about that got like the new tracker i just assumed i was in it because you know i opened it up and it looked different but it turns out i wasn't <laughs> so so what you're saying is that the people who got a different setup are a subset of a subset Possibly, unless they change it for everybody where everybody just sees, I don't know if everybody just sees the grass now, or maybe there's like part of, some check. of the people I, see I, the grass, I and then. Today. I thought it was you... just iOS users. He has an Android though, right? Oh, my girlfriend has an iOS, and she has the same thing that I do. I don't know, I haven't opened it in a week. 
But yeah, the the actual subset me, of people for that have it. For me, when I'm editing this, please put on Glitch X City's uh, remix of the Pokemon Go, Pokemon Go Home theme. Thank you. Oh, I use that song. It's good. Good. <laughs> yeah, I. Uh, you were saying? I saw like a video of what the the new thing actually was, and it has nearby and sightings in the same menu, and nearby. Uh, it still has the same thing where there's like a smaller picture of the Pokemon and then there's like a bigger picture behind it. But the bigger picture, instead of just being grass, it's actually a picture of like the circle you see on Pokestops. So you have like, I think, two rows of nearby and then just under that is the sightings. So the nearby actually shows you Pokemon that are near you around Pokestops in the area. So like, let's say you're next to like, uh, I don't know, you're next to the White House. You open up your thing, and then you see a, a little the little circle of the White House Pokestop or whatever it is, and then you see a Pokemon next to it. So you're like, oh, um, this guy's near the White House. And then you, okay, well, that's a bad example because you can't really just... <laughs> Something just occurred to me. What teams are you all on? Uh... <laughs> Allow me to uh, get an image here um, to represent my team and how... Absolutely glorious, my team is. It better be what it, what I think it is. It better be yeah, what I think it is. I also have a theory of what it's gonna be. <laughs> uh, I love my team. I I I absolutely love my team. I support everything about my team, and uh, I may or may not be offended by situations going on with how the internet treats my team. Um, oh. And, uh, <laughs> oh, if it's a certain team, I can I can oh. diss out some stuff. Um, Wait, all right, post, uh, post the picture. I want to see. I'm, if, uh, I'm looking if for I'm... the the good the good one. Uh, yep. Uh, if I can find this, guys, find the I like eggs picture. What? The oh, I, then it's the not I the like, same picture. The I like eggs picture. I don't know what that is. It, it's a picture. Where it's saying, Professor Eck, and it says, uh, Generation One, choose, and it's Bulbasaur, well, so yeah, yeah, yeah. And, it's, uh, and then it's Pokemon Go, choose, and it's uh, Cand Can Candela sitting like sassily on the desk saying, I see a winner in you, ah, like pep talk. And that's Blanche with like, I uh, like with her hands up to her hand, like, I see uh, true uh, potential in you. And there's the fucking yellow guy sitting cross-legged up on the desk with his eyes all derpy going, I like eggs. <laughs> <laughs> I love my team. Oh, so your instinct. Instinct for life. You know what? I was just at Otakuthon this weekend. I don't know if you know what that is. It's, it's like an anime convention. No way. And there was... Two people who are cosplaying Team Instinct players, and <laughs> nobody else from any other team cosplaying their team. So, you know what? Good, good, good on you, Instinct, Instinct. for actually representing. And, and like what? people would, <laughs> oh people God, would just like shout out and be like Instinct, and then they like hear them and they just do like a the dab. <laughs> it's pretty funny. So uh, I, I dropped something on? pretty good. Uh, what the hell's a? Why is it a BMP? God damn it! So, I am on the team that apparently people don't like. I guy Valor. <laughs> oh, so you're part of the Rubber Chicken Clan? I see. I, I was wondering if you guys are gonna like assume I meant Valor or Mystic when I said that, but yeah, I'm, I'm on. Valor. I'm on Valor. I'm <laughs> All right, so uh, my everyone's. To that, um, hold up, my response. Um, do you oh, have Valor? Yeah. Put in the chat. I, I know this GIF, Go Team Instinct, but <laughs> No, no, the second one. Oh, Team Instinct, team is, all instinct having... is all about having faith in innate abilities of your Pokemon, trusting your own gut to bring out success. Uh, Alice, can you read the blue part? Uh, Dark Souls. Fine, Nick. I'm, I'm getting team... onto it. <laughs> team right. Mystic succeeds through a calm mind and keen intellect by truly understanding, understanding what, what makes Pokemon, Pokemon tick and focusing on evolution. Yeah. You can best any foe. Don't fucking interrupt me. <laughs> uh Valor <laughs> Valor rules get wrecked scrubs <laughs> Oh I bet you do actually have a primate <laughs> Uh no I don't 
I have like a list of Pokemon that I'm going to evolve in a video though. So I like uh, I have like 20 Pokemon I can evolve to make new entries in my Pokedex, and Primate's one of them. Oh my gosh, Team Instinct's the best. <laughs> yeah, I, I had Alice, like a are you actually serious. Mystic? Yeah. Oh my god, we got the oh. Trinity! <laughs> I had like a serious debate once I hit level 5 about whether I was going to be Valor or the Mystic. Game video? Uh, no. <laughs> it, it talks about how Team Mystic is the most popular because A, it's blue, which is the world's most favorite color. And it's uh, in the middle, And it's in the right? middle, yes. Yeah. And it just naturally, by having more people at the start, it snowballs. <sighs> and uh, Instinct is the least favorite color. Um... And it also is put on the left, or all, or all the way, yeah, on the left. Um, I kind, it's the farthest from I your picked thumb. it because <laughs> I saw that it was the underdog. I hold my phone with my left hand. And I like the idea about breeding. I oh. didn't really, really like the idea about instinct and that stuff, but I liked about breeding. Um, I like eggs. <laughs> so uh, what you're saying is you like watching helpless animals fuck. You sick, sick man. <laughs> I'm a breeder, thank you very much. I've always been a breeder. My my Pokesona yeah. is a breeder, guys. So you I'm like throwing bird. Pokemon into a big pink blob. I see how it is. I never use dittos. I fashioned the most amazing Del competitive Del Caddy through eight generations of stable breeding with only levy level 50 or above Pokemon. I am a honest, respectful breeder. And I wait, I what? built a Del Caddy, bred it with an Absol so that it could get last resort, and I made a competitive last resort Del Caddy. Fuck you. Whatever you say, pervert. Hey, at least I don't mass breed hundreds of Charmanders until I get a shiny one, then just throw the rest away. I yeah, beg your pardon. That? I did that with Nick. uh Espers. Uh, we are, we are the a role centric channel, guys, and I do not take kindly to your uh crude ways. Get the fuck off. I uh <laughs> No, please don't go. <laughs> I uh I don't even know how many Charmanders I've hatched. I actually, in high school, I was so... I swear... Motherfucker. What? No. I... One sec. Okay. Well. I picked up an item in Dark Souls, and I, I don't see it anywhere in my inventory, and I'm scared what the hell happened to it. Was it good? I don't know. It says it said it was like stretched out or something like that, and I can't find it in any slots. Hey, Alice, could you uh, be quiet for a second? Can you guys can be quiet I... for a second? Okay, maybe. If you're oh, missing actually, that part, actually, I'm recording. Yeah. You could. Holy shit! That 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 would actually be fantastic. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah so I guess not. We're not cutting that. Thanks to Nick. Wonder. This is why you get another person record for security. <laughs> Wait, and... I am recording. Wait, okay, yes, I am. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm recording my audio. What? <laughs> Turns out you were recording just your own audio. No, I'm recording. Uh, yeah, I'm recording both. <laughs> okay, so next topic. We've done Pokemon Go. We've done the new Alolan stuff. Let's talk. What were they called? Z attacks? Z Z moves? Z, Z moves. Z moves. All right. Why don't we have? Oh wait, yeah, that's not. So, uh, first serious question. Um, is this remove? Is this replacing Mega? Uh, Mega. They have to have oh. the same stone. The same like they have to have the same stone. Be the same like special type, no special move, and you have to have the same stone as well. Well, I so. think there's a Z move for every type. And it's, yes, there it's is. Uh, one size fits all. And apparently mm -hmm. you have access to them at level 13. What? Well. In the trailer, a level 13 starter is using it. Well, that what level seems... were we when we went to Lucario? Exactly. It's just like the Lucario thing. It's just cheap ways to make people who, are, who don't care about the difficulty of the game breeze through it. Like, ugh. Man, the hand holding. I mean, granted that my Lucario totally got his ass kicked in the electric gym during my blind Nuzlocke, but. I never used that Lucario she gave me. I was like, 
Ah, uh, fuck no. Yeah. Mega Lucaria is such a shame. It's just like, adaptability just makes it unplayable. It's just too good. Just immediately got banned to Ubers. So are we all under the belief that they're removing Megas? I don't think they're no, removing they're not, I think they're, they're just not removing Megas here. There would be oh, no they're... explanation for the Mega Stones here. Well, if you can only have that one bracelet, then it's basically removing. Yeah, you you can't have access to the Mega Bracelet or Mega Bang Bangle. What's it what called if you in, get Hoenn? It... In, in, in Hoenn? Uh, like a bangle? Uh, what if they just give it to you endgame? Yeah, might might be, but I think that it might be completely out of this game because think about how you activate Mega Evolution. It's a button at the center bottom of your fight screen. If that is there, then where would they have also room for a Z-move trigger? I think it's replacing the button completely. I do not like how they tell us what's super effective or not. Let the kids fucking find out. Oh wait, is the... Oh yeah, I'll get to that in a sec, because I hate that too, but... Is the Z-move not an actual move on your Pokémon? It's no, like I... a fifth because button? because every single Grass-type uses the same Z-move. Oh, so you don't have to actually take up a move slot for it. No, I think Maybe it's, it's like the same tutor. button as the Mega Evolution button. Huh. I don't know. But yeah, super effective moves. What the hell's up with that? Yeah, I, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> How, like, it shows what? you... It shows you, like, <laughs> as a helpful t hip, tip, what's super effective or not. Oh, uh, I, I guess that keeps Aaron Hansen from fucking up again. Well, it's like, it... I think the thing is, it only shows up the second time you encounter that Pokemon. It's so, like the first time you... Wait, See, is, that, like, is uh, that the Rotom Pokedex? Oh yeah, that's, that's that could explain it. That I would accept the explanation if you have a little AI friend helping. Okay, you. fine, fine. I'll accept. Yeah, I will I'll totally accept that. that. Fucking, fuck but that. I don't want that's it. Nasty. It better that's nasty. okay. It better be disabled in like online battles. Yeah. If you don't fucking know the Pokemon, that's your own goddamn problem. Because the thing, the point that I made, I think when I talked about this before well, was I mean, that it, true. Go ahead, go ahead. The um, like yeah, it's helpful to new players. But then, like, if they get to rely on it too much, like, what's stopping them from just being like, Oh, uh, I'm a fire against the grass. Fire is good. I hit fire. And then you don't, like, predict them to switch into a water type or something. And you're just, that's like, you. mashing every button that says <laughs> super effective that you don't learn, like, competitive strategy. I mean, that's a detriment. Yeah, it's like, it, um, and what if they see, uh, if they don't Florida learn from their faults, the then time. they're never going to learn in the first place. Um, so, Nick, how would you feel if you beat the game and then got into the PSS to play against your friends on stream and Rotom pops up and is like, would you like to know, like, I'm trying to think of some calculations you were doing in the middle of a stream once to make sure that your stats were correct. You're like, all right, can a flamethrower take down a Mega Kangaskhan in two hits? Uh, if it's max out in its special defense EVs and its HP, how many hits would it take? Would it be two or three hit KO and Rotom pops up in the corner of your screen showing you 20 lines of calculations saying like every single competitive detail you could ever need like the world's most helpful obnoxious clippy oh, yeah it basically is a, a clippy are you, are you asking if I would welcome that yeah would you would you welcome someone doing that stats for you would you welcome uh... Nintendo or Game Freak con confirming that mindset I don't think so, because then it would just be like, uh, then they'd, they'd basically be telling you what the EVs of the Pokemon are that you're up against, right? Uh, what if it well, provided what speculative strategy? information of the current top tier trends? Oh, yeah, speaking of <laughs> and EVs and in IVs. Pokemon Showdown and, and Smogon. <laughs> just like, and he, he uh, the more, just give him a Siri situation, where the more time he gets exposed to the internet and the more searches you make him do, he just becomes more of a meme asshole. <laughs> just like totally calling you a scrub and shit and taking on lingo just becoming the taylor twitter bot <laughs> hey ai oh my gosh oh yeah that was a thing yeah what was i gonna say though I like don't know. oh yeah apparent, apparently there's like um ivy or e bo both ivy and ev training 
Yeah, what? Tell me about that. So I don't know. That was weeks ago, man. I got bigger stuff. I have opinions. All right, I, I'm into Dang and Rampa. I can talk to you about Dang and Rampa. It is a ring target segment, or maybe a versus secret segment. I don't know what I'm exactly calling competitive segments. Ring targets kind of for battles. Uh, it's a segment hosted by Nick. Go talk about the new Super Ultra Trainer. Okay. So here's the thing about why I like it and I also hate it. <laughs> so, um, you know how in VGC 2016 they made it so you can have like two legendaries on your team, right? Yes. So basically, you made it. They made it so everyone has you to kind of half. Uh, yeah, yeah, you have to. Kyogre. You have to have a legendary on your team because then you'll just get like stomped by all the people who have them and you don't. So. Basically, that kind of means you have to, like, air, qu air quotes, cheat. <laughs> like, you use software that, like, EV gens the Pokemon. A, a oh, I just kept trading until I got the EVs I wanted. Well, I mean, like, yeah, you can change the EVs, but the IVs will always be set, right? So right, either I mean, you just, always, like, yeah. Yeah, that's what I meant. soft reset I get them constantly. Confused. Like, if you soft reset constantly until you get, like, a, like a Landorus that has Adamant and then, like, five perfect IVs. Or are you just like Gen it? <laughs> so basically, if they have hyper training, then you could just, you know, catch a legendary that's the right nature and then just buff all of its IVs up later so that it's actually, you know, competitively viable. So they're making it so legendaries. It's easier to use legendaries in competitive battles, which is good Plus, if they're going to, like, allow. Be more prevalent and they're going to be more better. Yeah. And also, it makes me feel bad when I, like, work so hard to get shinies with high IVs, and I end up getting one, like, that I got, like, a shiny Ralts that had five perfect IVs, and it was actually the right IVs, and it was Modest and Edtrace, and I was like, oh my god, this is the perfect shiny Pokemon, and then, like, it felt so unique that I got, like, a perfect shiny one out of, like, the 40 shinies I've got, and then, like, now, with this feature, basically everybody's shinies will all be six IVs because you can just boost them all up no matter what they... Well, maybe they it'll stop. be more difficult than super training. Well, I mean, even if it is more difficult, eventually you can just be like, max everything out. So if everybody's like, oh yeah, I have a shiny of six IVs too, it makes it like less special that I I worked for it. <laughs> True, but I mean, you can never prove to anyone that you didn't just hack it in, so that should really be a a feeling that you yourself feel and that no one else could take away from you. My Greninja, my shiny Greninja turned out to be adamant instead of modest. But I rolled <laughs> well, with it. Run Waterfall, bro. I run Shadow Sneak and Rock Climb and it works. Yep. Okay, uh, I will get back to you on that. But real quick, I think that Rock should be super effective against Fairy type. Mm. In, in, a, in a previous podcast I have it all edited and everything I talk about how you look at every single fairy type introduced in gen 6 and they should all be weak to squish they are all squish type they would all like, because... either rock into the situation be completely destroyed because rocks beat flowers I know that grass actually beats rock so it's kind of a precarious situation there but I think that all the fairies should be weak to rock and that would give them more weaknesses than just poison and steel, which are rarely used competitive attacking types. Ah, I want if fairies to be more balanced. Fairy is like super effective against Dark. I feel like Ghost should be super effective against Fairy. I, I want know. I want Rock to be super effective against them because Rocks, except for Stealth Rocks, what good are Rocks in competitive? I want Rock to be flame. better. Talon Flame. Stealth rocks. That's all you'd ever use, though, because it does more damage than most rock attacks. Talon flame. I see your point. That would be a good weakness to fairy to add. Look at all the fairy types getting introduced. They should all be weak to squish type. Add a rock. That would make nine tails four times weak to rock. Mm, yeah. <laughs> Doesn't make sense that fairies are not very effective against fire, but fire has nothing special against fairies. Yeah, I don't know what they were... Uh, uh. I guess it's trying to save, like, uh, all their their precious firefighting starters from oh getting gosh, <laughs> destroyed by fairies, so they made fire resist. I mean, we gotta think fairy. back to how they introduced Sylveon with the whole live-action thing of them punching bricks and stuff, and, like, 
being not liking a like gas chamber and that's how they tried to tell us that it was weak to poison type like I mean their situation there you you weren't there for that back in the introduction is gen 6 when we heard about Sylveon for the first time oh, I don't remember yeah. that all right back time travel with me here when they introduced Sylveon uh, nobody knew what the fuck it was there was ah! there was some kids saying uh, my dad works at Nintendo and he told me <laughs> that it's fairy type and this was the one fucking situation where that kid was right but nobody believed him everyone was too busy debating over sound and light types with Noivern man that's happening all over again no the, you're never gonna have a light type because dark type is actually not dark type if you look at the original translation no i mean like the like people being like oh i heard this about pokemon oh, yeah. you know like <laughs> back when everybody was kids playing red and blue and they're like i heard you can find Mew here my dad works at nintendo <laughs> stuff like that it's happening with pokemon but this Go kid's dad again. actually worked at nintendo and told everyone about fairy type and nobody believed him <laughs> so, uh, I thought that Sylveon was a ghost type. Why the hell would you think something so the eyes, pretty? The eyes, people. So, But it's but... pink. <laughs> yeah. Like, the eyes are so... And I thought Sylve, and I was thinking about mythology and fey creatures, and I was like, well, since you don't have a fairy type, the closest thing would be ghost. Also, it was we kind have... of floating. In a picture. We have an ice cream cone Pokemon. Who cares about mythology? <laughs> yeah, has anyone ran the background on the lion and the bat thing? Like, the closest thing we could get was with our, our resident expert researcher researcher on the last podcast, uh, High Voltage. High Voltage, so amazing. He's the only reason, he is the main reason why this channel exists. He did his research about Hawaiian myths and told a story about. Um, a whole thing about how the moon was a lady and something and a childhood story about a girl, something died, and a bat and the moon. So the bat and the moon makes sense, but I don't know about the lion and the moon. We talk about it in the past episode, in the past podcast. Oh, you're talking about the legendaries? Yes, the legendaries. Okay. Well, I assume they were somehow based on Hawaiian mythology yeah the lion looks we, like a digimon we found out what the what the uh, owl means but we don't know what the lion means hmm when you say owl you mean bat did i say owl all this time <laughs> i meant bat yeah i'm i'm pretty bad it, it's been a while guys it's been a while all right so how many islands are in the alola region 69 Five. With, without counting the artificial one in the center. Four. Sixty-nine. So, how do you think they're going to manage to pull off a game with four gym leaders? <laughs> Trial leader. Or, uh, uh, a, a, what? A ho, a, kahunas. Oh, know, kahunas, yes, Kahunas. Matadas. Um, actually, yes. wait. If there are four... Oh, there are eight gym leaders. Hey, hear me out, hear me out. Well, you yeah, because you have the four totem Pokemon and the four Kahunas. It's eight. There's like the four. There's like four totem Pokemon, four trial leaders, and then like the Kahuna. And Thomas. Yeah, the See, big yeah, Kahuna. It, it actually isn't that different. It's just that. Um, oh no. The gym leaders are in like pairs of two, kind of. No, what what I'm what I'm sad about is. The totem Pokemon are going to be one Pokemon plus, like, an assistant they can call in. It's, like, one and a half Pokemon. I like assistants. And the Kahunas will only have, like, two Pokemon. They're moving even further away from enemy characters having more than... Having full parties. Why can they not make a Pokemon game where Give the opponent actually has six goddamn Pokemon Oh, parties? yeah. They're Did you moving see, uh, even further away from that. I get that it makes what's it called? it makes their Pokemon more special. But here's the thing: we know every single one is Cynthia's Pokemon because they're all important because they're all a challenge. Spiritomb, Gastrodon, Garchomp. Depending on your depending on your game. Um, wow. Cynthia from... having six Pokemon didn't take away from her being an amazing character. Didn't take away from her emblem Pokemon being her Garchomp. You can She's have bait. their emblem Pokemon be their emblem Pokemon without that being their only Pokemon, man. She's babe. 
what uh, what was I gonna say? I forgot. <laughs> uh, the number uh, of Pokemon oh, yeah. in their parties is too damn. Low. Did you see a uh, Pokemon Origins that like four episode series? Yes. Where they kind of like explained it. How'd they explain you it? You see, Brock like opens the Brock opens up like a suitcase or something, or like a place where he has all his Pokeballs, and he yeah, actually has the wall, and he chooses like yeah. something that counters the. He actually has six Pokemon, but he's like, "Oh, since you brought two Pokemon, I'll bring two Pokemon why too." Why did they bring eight? So that did they bring a full team. It explains why Brock only has like two. I guess since but, Red but only battled Red him with throws two. Throws all his entire party at him. He had like only two. At the time, yeah, at least three. He had a he, he had a string shotting thing. He had a yeah, charm. He had a bug. Things. He had his starter, and he had a bird. I don't remember. I didn't actually finish the thing. I like it was something left like off. that. I left off after uh, Lavender Town. It's it's a pretty good little short series. You should definitely no, finish it. No, I I should. I just Man, it's because, so good because at the end. Giovanni. Oh yeah, because Giovanni. Oh my gosh, Nick, have you read? the Pokemon Adventures manga? Uh, nope. <laughs> you should. It is so good. I was actually just looking at it recently. Really? Trying to Which figure out how many issues there were. Uh, not actually reading it, just like looking at the wiki to see you as like, oh, if I start uh, reading this, where do I start wiki. from? This is a very plot twist heavy thing. Oh. I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you this. I want you to read Kanto, Johto, Hoenn, Sinnoh, and then stop after Heart Gold, Soul Silver. Okay, good, because you know this sucks. Gen 5 and 6. I, I've heard, I've heard that the Auras story is good, but Gen 5 and Gen 6 have such painful cringeworthy like big stupid marketing things to try to get people back into it it just loses the drive that made all the other ones special i i just can't go back to them because it's just so cringy and mind controlling shauna and all the crucified gym leaders it it gets stupid persona uh no mind controlled shauna no i heard crucif crucified <laughs> and that just remind me of persona yes um, so Nick, yes, uh, you want to uh, go through the whole arc of the Dex holders up until the end of HeartGold Soul Server. And when you have completed um, the uh, Fire Red and Leaf Green arc after uh, Gold Silver, so when you get to Emerald, we have a podcast, we have a secret potion, which is our spoiler podcast, about how awesome that sh that manga is with me and Professor Bushy. Because That's when you get to amazing. Emerald? Yeah, when you're done with Fire and Leaf Green. Hmm. Is uh, anyone... Well, check it out. Yes, thank you. Is anyone familiar or subscribed to the Pokemon Professor? I don't suppose so. He's kind of low-key, but, like, he is great. He only, he only likes Kanto. And he fucking bashes you, Nova. Next. So much. I love him. Next. <laughs> okay, so, Nick, we had a debate show. Uh, we've tried to record more episodes of it, but as of now, we only have one uh, called Defeatist, the Defeatist Debate Show. Defeatist? And defeatist, like the ability. <laughs> I know, I'm mocking you. I, we have so many puns here. Uh, and it was originally going to be me and my friend Laura, who's here on the channel, um, debating over why Gen 1 sucks or doesn't suck. But in talking about Gen 1 sucking, the conversation moved to Gen 6 sucking, and that changed the entire podcast to Does Gen 6 Suck? And uh, we come to Does an agreement it? by the end. But uh, you should definitely watch that, people listening, because um, you get to hear me and Laura fight. <laughs> Is she your girlfriend or something? No. <laughs> I'm, I'm very close to dying. Shut up. Yes, the extremely known for being a intense romantic, like to the point of doing absolutely adorable stuff over the internet to stay together with someone, talking to the aromantic. Oh yeah, yeah you are that, aren't you? Eh, 
Oh, Lauren wants me dead, by the way. Did you <laughs> mention that? Um, y'all live in bum fucks, so I'm sure your emotions are all sorts of. <laughs> she she lives things. in Texas. I live in Michigan. I don't have to worry about. You both her. live in bum fuck. <laughs> Fucks bum fuck. You have, y you live in bum fuck. Is this is this like a show thing? I'm not getting. <laughs> it means you you you're. What's the population the of your of town? Nowhere. Can I count it on my limbs? Okay. Does Sprint and... cover your state? <laughs> AT... I'm, uh, my provider is at and I know, but at and has like the whole fucking country, so if your state isn't covered by Sprint, it shows... You know. I, I'm pretty sure... I'm, I'm near the capital. I don't know, man. What are we talking uh, according about? According to that commercial, all of Montana is... Oh, what the fuck? Why am I talking about a commercial? Oh my god, I've been brainwashed. So, Pokemon... <laughs> yes, oh god, what... It, please tell me there's another topic. Uh, we talked about gym systems, Z-Attacks, Pokemon Go, Alolan forums. Uh, and the new Pokemon. Um, yeah, I mean, I think only things left is, uh... Nick and Alice, if you guys want to talk about your channels or anything else, this is Welcome to the Leftovers. I made a sprite thing of Dang and Vampa, and I was fooling around with music for a long time because I was bored. Uh, please send me that so I can put it in the link cable in the description. It's in my video, bitch. Put, or it's on my channel. Send me your I don't know. So you can put <laughs> Lazy. In the link cable in the description. Lazy. Plus, I don't do it for the views. Uh, well, Nick, are you I can fed up say. with all my puns yet and gonna leave me forever? No, what? no, you, I, we barely talk. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Nick, what do you want to say? Um, about my channel? Yes. Okay. I make Pokemon videos <laughs> to a steady, de steadily declining audience that's mostly there for Minecraft. Um, so if you guys listening are interested in Pokemon Go and the series that I'm about to make soon, my Pokemon Alpha Sapphire Shiny Lock, which I meant to make like a year ago. We, we, that was on the podcast. <laughs> yeah. Oh my yeah. gosh. And we talked about everything, like with the audience putting names in for it and everything. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I, yeah. We both got around to making our things we talked about a year ago. Oh no, I haven't made it yet. Oh yes. Okay. <laughs> I have a really complicated story with like my, uh, my graphic designer that I'm not 100% sure if I should mention because if I don't and then people realize that something I have looks like something that somebody else has, they might be like, you copied this guy, even though I really didn't. I, but... I'm very proud that I handmade my uh, layout in uh, Photoshop when I was at high school. Oh yeah, I, I, I'm like, if I make something that looks nice and it actually like works well and people like click on my videos because they I think actually... that looks cool... I actually have, uh, I made layouts, or at least I made backgrounds in Photoshop for three or four other series that my friends were supposed to do. So I do have extra different colored layouts sitting around if you want one. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, I can, I mean, will this mute my microphone if I open this window? Thank God it didn't. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I can look for that. Oh, I already paid for the current layout that I'm going to have anyway. Twice. You paid for someone to do something that I could... Yes. Yeah, we could probably both do, like, in, a, in an hour. Yeah, I know. I, Motherfucker, I try turned off make my microphone my again. Stuff, but then, like, when I get somebody else to make it, I'm just like, it looks so much less bad than what I would have Money made. is quite the motivator. Yeah. Um, I have plenty of artist friends, but I don't know how many of them are graphic designers. I have plenty of artist friends, but all of them are teenagers, so I wouldn't exactly. <laughs> well, uh, if you need something, send out to a few uh, artists for something. I, I, I am following many of them, and I can drop a tag bomb and hopefully get you something. But sounds like you got your, your situation solved out there. Yeah, hopefully this one will go better and not take six months for me to get it and not look exactly like the thing that he made for somebody else. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, I, I would happily uh, want to help you out with that. Um, would you be interested in some kind of dual commentary for our Let's Plays? 
Um, so I, I, I hit a point where I um, I got past the first gym and I'm ready to go to the second region, but I'm so devastated by the idea that I might not get any viable encounters that I don't know how I'll be able to keep the commentary fresh when I'm just depressed. Because <laughs> my team is so barren. Wait, for what kind of series? Uh, it is the Renda Red Black 1 run on the... Oh. Um, what do you mean by dual commentary? <laughs> just hop on Skyrim like... Watch him play. Yeah. Oh. Hang out. Just like the uh, dual commentary. Um, random Moemon Emerald Pair. Basically Nuzlocke Game Grumps. From my channel. Oh, I, I don't hey, watch Game Grumps. Didn't do any, Game Grumps. Any, a uh, lot. Challenge runs. I, I, no, I, but what I'm what I'm talking about is like dual commentary. One person plays and it's talking. Eh. Um, I was actually lucky that uh, back two years ago, Laura was actually over at my house for recording uh, a Moimon Let's Play. And it was my longest title for any series I've ever done. It was a randomized Moimon Emerald Paired Nuzlocke. Yeah. Oh, with dual commentary. That was that was what pushed the title over the edge. And uh, it was... Oh my gosh. We recorded with a GBA emulator. It was so glitchy. And the audio is so bad. It's such an old series. Wow. Oh, I did that once. I got a shiny on an emulator. And I was no! like, well, this is cool. Well, this is cool, but it's stuck here now. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, that sucks. I'm lucky I haven't encountered that. All right, Nick. Um, one more thing. Uh, so you said that your channel has a steadily declining fan base because oh. it came from <laughs> Minecraft views. Uh, yes. What up, Minecraft in the case? That is due to the Prank Wars series, which is how I found you many years ago. Yes, um, if whenever I look at my analytics, I get a little bit sad. Because, <laughs> <laughs> like, my, you know, and the little, like, summary that shows you, like, the last 28 days... Like what the current, like the stats for the last 28 days were, and then whether it was higher or lower than your previous month. Yes, and did you know that uh, you can actually view other channels' analytics through the website Social Blade? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, my, my subscriber count has literally been in the negative for if like. If you want to see all of the uh, totally not depressing details about his channel, you can click the link <laughs> description to snoop all up about it. I think currently it's at negative 80, so negative 80 subscribers in the last 28 days. Uh, so just that's... for reference, this channel has 40 subscribers. I think I have 42. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, um, but so the I way I see it, yes, go ahead. it's more like trimming the fat, you know? <laughs> not, yeah, not... You, you, gotta, you gotta say that when like YouTube does a bomb of inactive channels and you lose 10 subscribers a day, or in your case, probably 500. I not probably saying, lost like, it too. Not um, saying that people who don't like watching me and unsubscribe are like the fat, but <laughs> if like if people are unsubscribing, they're obviously not into like the Pokemon content, right? So it's just a matter of balancing yeah, out so, where uh, the amount of people who are leaving because they don't want Pokemon is outweighed by people who start finding my channel who do like Pokemon. The Prank War series was is it fair to say that it was a viral hit? Yes. <laughs> Was um, it over a thousand views? I mean, it's His no. His channel had twenty thousand subscribers two years ago. Oh. No, and no, Charlie bit my finger, but. <laughs> and keep in mind, two years ago he had twenty thousand subscribers. Th how old is that series? Prank War. That was almost like when we started, so that was like two thousand eleven. Five years ago, so three years after it ended, you still had twenty thousand subscribers. Yeah, I we was, just barely I was passed if... it. I um, I had a I have on my main channel. I do a lot of interviews with my uh, podcast Progress Cast. There's also Progress Cast version of the internet, which is kind of more hang out and just do a bunch of random shit like the red card. But I do try to do a kind of interview format, and I've been looking for my YouTube friends to get on that for interesting topics. And I was wondering if you could do a podcast talking about going viral. Sure, but I don't know how much insight I would have after all these years. 
I have Bye. a video with a thousand views. I could do this. Okay, I have a, I have a, what's, I have a what's joke video, video at now? which is at six hundred views. Um, I, I was, after, I was after joking, a, by the way, after a week of this video being up, it was the fastest something got that many views, and it's a joke video about my hair, and it's like a memo in memoriam of my hair after I got it cut, and it has six hundred views after it had six hundred views after a week, and it had. I think 15 minutes watched and it's a 20 minute video. Holy crap. Ouch. I just went on like searched on YouTube Minecraft Prank War and my episode because you know episode 1 always has the most views yeah. like of a series. My episode 1 is like has the highest view count of any Minecraft Prank War episode 1 that I can see. Which is... Like it's even higher than the than the guy I used to watch all the time. Back then, Vintage Beef. Beef. Where, like, his his Prank War is what I got inspired from. And his his episode one for his Prank War series has 890,000 views. Are you past mine a million? Has, mine, mine's at 1.284 million. Oh, my God. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> it's yours not had even the a server, good video. Too. It's such a bad video, though. <laughs> Well, when I watch uh, you know, it, I'm just like, why did I do the this? The quality of those videos doesn't matter. My channel got to 250 subscribers from me being 13 making Minecraft videos. Back in the day, Minecraft was so mind-blowingly popular I that you think... wanted to watch anything, no matter who it was. And it was only yeah. years afterwards when we realized, oh, we can unsubscribe from all these tiny children and realize we can just watch one channel that produces daily content. Yeah. <laughs> I used to do Minecraft as well. We all did. Yep. It was a phase. And now it's pretty much like, you know, you have the children who watch a million Minecraft channels, but for uh, those of us who have finished puberty, there's the Yogg's cast. <laughs> I watch Game Grumps. And that's it. <laughs> I did a bit of a... Watch for a while, though. I did a bit of a bad thing earlier this year, or oh, no. at the end of 2015, where I I think I, I was playing Minecraft story mode at the time, and I was like, wow, Minecraft is like, now that I'm playing this, I'm getting reminded of all the fun times I had playing Minecraft. I should start playing again. And then I got like really, really, really into it for like two days, and I was like, I'm going to make Minecraft videos again, and it'll bring my channel back to life. And so... I started like setting up to do the whole server thing again and made a video being like guys guess what the server's coming back and then uh, a week later I was like well uh, I kind of had my fill of Minecraft <laughs> I built like one thing ran around the world a bit and now I'm kind of over it <laughs> that is so I what this... I call a youtuber <laughs> blowing their load <laughs> And so I had this video of people were being like, hey, remember how you said the server's coming back? When's that happening? And then they're like, I'm, I'm like, oh no, I did a bad thing. Cockties. <laughs> oh, man. Um, so then I had to make a video being like, yeah, I'm not doing Minecraft right. videos. <laughs> I, uh, that is what I call when a YouTuber blows their load. And my yeah. whole channel is based on the fact that I never did that. And sure, if I had, if I had totally invested in, in the whole thing and just totally gone for it, I may have thousands of subscriber, subscribers. But I chose instead to take YouTube as a learning experience. And I have watched dozens of channels go from my level of mediocrity to very, very, very popular to non-existent. <laughs> channels come and channels go. Um... It's All Minecraft was a channel that I knew before it had a thousand subscribers, and it blew up with its music videos. And then it disappeared. One of the oldest channels I know that is still active, kind of, and still relevant is Bifio. I knew him way back. And he's the guy who makes the random songs with the four Peters, poorly animated, doing songs and stuff. It's so hard to describe his channel, but he's a great guy and a great composer. Um, I contacted him trying to make a Minecraft parody song myself back when I was like 14. So glad I didn't carry out with that. But I think I still have the MIDI file. Yeah, so nice. 
Yeah. And now I have a whole bunch of contacts on Twitter and stuff for like scriptwriters and voice acting and things from all my forum and YouTube connections and RSS feeds. Like, you got to keep a hold of your friends. Those that stay around can be very useful. What are friends? <laughs> and Alice, I'm sure you'll make a wonderful contact someday. I'm, sure I'm right you know, here. You make great content. You make fantastic content. The oh my gosh. I'm right the, here. The, the, the Gmod jail thing. That jail, jail video. Thing? Oh, yeah, that. With, yeah, with yeah, the that's ponies. The one I'm, that's the one I'm proud of the most. Oh my god, it's so funny. Nick, like, if you're going to watch one video from Alice's channel, yeah, watch, sure, that watch that one. Also, I just, like, we talked about Nick's channel for a long time, but I want to talk again about how amazing your channel is, Alice. Your channel is extremely unique. Don't laugh. Your channel do, does something I don't see any other channel doing. Which Not giving a fuck about what they do. Normally, I would think that this would be a entirely stupid business decision, but it is. Your I do thing. it for fun. Your I'm a film editor and Not titles a... give absolutely okay. no inclination over what game is being played or what is going on from I... the thumbnail and the title. That's because I'm kind of copying off of Cool Dude, and I just love him so- Well, now it's Breezy, but I, I love her so much. Wait, what's your channel? Cyber Slifer. Oh, okay. That Dump was like Pyromancer at- What? <laughs> I like typed your name, and I was like, I don't see this anywhere. Yeah. Oh, that's just because I'm a Pyromancer in Dark Souls. Oh, okay. Uh, drop your link in the channel- in the Skype- Skype chat. I will when I'm done with defeating this gargoyle. Oh, yes, yes, of course. I know how to Google things. Um, if you if you Google me, what will probably come up is uh, Alice's theme song from Shin Megami Tensei. If oh, I found it thing. through like uh, the the related channels hey, from uh, someone from yours. My thing. <laughs> yes, I knew it would get someone to subscribe or someday. <laughs> I constantly manage that like every single month i like switch people around on that thing because i care about it so much because back in the day that was the only way we got viewers was sub for sub sub boxes and now I sub never boxes has a completely sub different for meaning. Subs. but man those were the days uh, when you could have a full background to your channel now you can oh yeah, yeah i remember around. those uh, yeah, I miss the days where you could customize like every stupid color and then everything would be like I'm just so glad that I text. got grandfathered in with my YouTube link and now I actually have youtube.com slash patchplays. There was some really? fucker with one Minecraft video and an inactive channel for four years before I was able to get the channel name from him. There was some fucker with the name Cyber Slifer, but then it got deleted so I took on Cyber Slifer. Yeah, I used to be Cyber so Slifer 10. It's so good to have a hyperlink. Uh, the Forest Door channel is, you know, C slash zero five four three seven eight slash dash P Thor question mark fifty two. Like, there's no way you can t put that down on like a hand it, handout. Please sheet. tell me you just made that up. No, but my channel name for Forest Door since it was made after twenty fourteen is like exceedingly long. So you actually memorized the the whole thing? No, no. I just shouted it's actually out actually U C H C I S. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding, I'm not reading that whole thing. Yeah. Oh my gosh, this is great. Um Yeah, uh, I don't have anything else to say except you know, stuff coming back to the channel, stuff coming back to my main channel as well, and hopefully to all our channels as fall comes and as I get See, I got a new video editing software and I'm still Ooh. trying to learn how to use it. So Which one? I use HitFilm Pro, um, Pro 4 Express now. Or HitFilm 4 Express. It's like completely free, but it's still good. So it's hard to do. Yeah. I still have Premiere Pro for a little bit longer. Before my, because uh, my my old out. software got so slow to the point I just didn't, didn't want to bother with it anymore. And uh, I might actually start... I don't know what exactly I do. I'm... I might do an unboxing of a new Pathfinder beginner box I got. Uh, I've taken up playing Dungeons and Dragons uh, in Pathfinder, and uh, did you? I'm a did, DM, did you? I'm a DM. Oh, how how's magic going for you? I draft, and I play a bit of oh. commander, but I don't play standard. 
I, 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 want, I want to play standard, though. I want to play standard because I want to make a really stupid Felidar Sovereign deck with Boros Colors and Lone Rider with Pump Spells. The fuck you mean, Boros Colors? You play Orzhov for days. Extra um, it, is it extract? No, no, no. It's extort. Extort, extort everyone. Magic the Gathering. What? what? Do you play Magic the Gathering? I did a long time ago. <laughs> uh... Have any of you ever played I, Dungeons and Dragons or Pathfinder? Yes. I played uh, like a friend's custom-made Dungeons and Dragons thing just to make I'm him happy. It was my, okay. uh, I'm taking my homebrew up to Plattsburgh, and I'm actually going to introduce a ton of people to it. I might actually make D&D content. Nick? Yeah, I have a friend who uh, came up with a, a variation of D&D, but with uh, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Oh, my God. <laughs> And we might be playing that soon. Oh my gosh. Wow, I have a ton of people I could actually invite if I ever did a Roll20 game. I'll try to keep in mind that you play D&D. I well, mean, there is a I way haven't... to do D&D online as well. Yeah. The last time I played it was like 10 years ago, so I don't know. Oh my gosh. If... The fact that you have the seniority to s say that. <laughs> I played like when I was in... Like my first year of high school or second year, I think, just to fit in. In just and a you, few you months, would, I went from you wouldn't think... to being a DM at an official uh, Monday night. You wouldn't think that you people would say I played D and D to fit in. <laughs> oh my god! Because usually when kids try and fit in with high school, it's with like the cool kids, oh, right? Please, but... <laughs> uh, my. Uh, the first actual episode of Progress Cast featuring the internet was um, me and a bunch of my friends talking about our sh our very odd high school anime clubs. And my story, I talked about. I actually, I don't know if I mentioned this. We played a ho a homebrew RPG, like a super simplified Dungeons and Dragons situation, and uh, we had twelve people for one session. Twelve. It was, Is that a lot? <laughs> it, I, it might have been 13, actually. Um, All around the table, and it was just absolute chaos. Oh. Yes, we had 11 or 12 players and one DM. Damn. It was, it was, it was nonsense. I'm so glad I, I can play actual nice, calm D&D &D today. Any last things? Uh, I think we're wrapped up here. I play really stupid and trolly decks and magic. My newest deck is. Do you, are you familiar with Biovisionary? Uh, is that the blue green? Is that the Simic card that allows you to play a card off the top of your deck if you stack your deck? No, it's the Simic card that if you have four cards with the name Biovisionary by the end of your turn, you win the game. Oh. So you just cast one, put up a bunch of um, fogs, and. Fog walls or whatever it is, yeah. Turbo. And then, yeah, you know the zero two that doesn't take damage. Yeah, do that, and then just duplicate Bio Visionary so you win. See, I wanted to fog in standard and do a Feldar Sovereign uh, life gain deck with the Feldar Sovereign alternate win condition because there is a two drop that can turn to a four four life link trample first strike. Hmm. And I want to make a deck with that. I think we need to wrap up though, 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 though. though, though. Podcast. Yes. Everyone? Sure. Goodbye. Bye. I don't know you people. Goodbye, everybody.